Welcome to Moriel TV. My name is Joshua, live with James Jacob Prash for a uh, quick question and answer. Jacob, over the years, um, you've been uh, falsely accused by some hyper-messianic types and even some fanatics within the pre-trib movement of not being able to speak Hebrew, um, questioning your academic credentials, and so forth. Um, in short, can Jacob Prash speak Hebrew, and are your academic credentials valid? Yes, what you say is definitely something we've experienced. Because we've warned about the extreme access of the Messianic movement that has actually seen non-Jews dressing up like rabbis and putting on tefillin and putting even non-Jews in bondage to the law. This extreme axis of the messianic movement that lifts up Jewishness instead of Yeshua-ness, um, we've warned about it. First of all, I consider such people to be neo-Galatians based on what it says in Galatians. They're the new Galatians. They're doing things that Galatians tells us not to do. But it becomes worse than that. Most of them are charlatans and frauds. If an actual rabbi encountered these people who are calling themselves rabbis, they would balk, and rightly so. When you talk to these people, they don't really know much about Judaism generally. They don't speak Hebrew generally. But they know bits. So they play up the bits they know. And one of the things that was said about me some time ago was la shonra, the bad tongue or the evil tongue, simply because I was saying that the extreme access of the Messianic movement is not scriptural. La shonra, you have an evil tongue. More recently, there's some guy uh, who, who says he, he called me up to go on his radio broadcast or a podcast or something. Well, nobody called me up to go on any podcast. Anybody who books me for a radio broadcast or a TV interview or a podcast or anything like that, it goes through Moriel. It doesn't go to me personally. Now, in Moriel, we have people who speak Hebrew. We have people who don't. We have people who can only read it or speak some. But we have Hebrew speakers and we have non-Hebrew speakers. Um, maybe he called Moriel. I don't know, but he did not call me. And his claim was he asked me a question in Hebrew and I couldn't answer, therefore I'm a fraud. Well, I assure you, my background was in science, but I am a graduate of London School of Theology, formerly LBC, and I did postgraduate research at uh, Tyndale House at Cambridge University in Britain, and I have a certificate also in Judaism from Cambridge University. Uh, as far as speaking Hebrew, <clears throat> and he came at the Bay of Rit, and he knew the Evrit of Mehod, and he got the Baharas the Kamashanim, Ishli Mishpacha, him and Mamini Mizraelim Gamkin, and I came at the Brim of Ripa Bayati from Yamafilo, and Leo de Masha Huomar, Aval Lerota de Goima Ene, and the Hitler Besh, come as a rabbi, him to fill it in Colmine, the Stios, the Masha Migo Hach. אני לא מכיר אותם, אני לא יודע מה שהם עושים, אבל זה בטוח שאני לא רוצה שום קשר איתם. וזה לא נכון שהם ברור להתקשר אליי, להזמין אותי להיות באיזה רדיו שלהם. זה לא נכון, לא נכון לגמרי. בלתי אפשרי. שמי יעקב, אני מאמין, אני יודע עברית. אני יודע יהדות מן הבחינה של התיאולוגיה האקדמית גם כן, ואני לא משקר, אין לי שום סיבה לשקר, ככה. So, any Israeli who just heard what I said will tell you I can speak Hebrew. <laughs> I refuted these claims. I stated my background, and... That's all there is to it. I don't know. You know, the silly people saying silly things. Now, I know that the pre-trib people and their desperation to discredit outspoken voices who are not pre-trib, such as myself, have gotten rather ugly and resorted to some stupid things. 
they're grabbing onto all kinds of things. So if some crackpot who puts on to fill in or a talit and wears a kippa states that I don't know Hebrew and I don't know Judaism and my credentials are false. Well, these things are not true. But the internet is the wild, wild west. Anybody can say anything. And so they'll get a hold of it and propagate it. They have to take the ad hominem approach instead of dealing with the issues. The plain re meaning and plain reading of the text of Second Thessalonians and of the Olivet Discourse makes it clear we must know who the Antichrist is before the rapture can happen. That's the issue. You want to debate that, we can debate that. But in the inability to debate that, they're going for personal attacks and finding crackpots saying ridiculous things. It's absurd. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it except tell you the truth. It's just, it's just not like that. I assure you, uh, I've been an evangelist to the Jews for well over 30 years. I've witnessed to Jews in a number of countries. I've lived in Israel. I speak Hebrew. My family are Israeli believers. I was in the IDF for a very short period, just for some training, but my son was in it for the full three years. Um, my wife has degrees from Israel uh, in Hebrew language and in Jewish history. Although she's a mathematician by profession, she has additional credentials in Judaism. She's a graduate. Uh, I mean, linguistic Judaism. Uh, we don't have anything to lie about. We have no reason to lie. You, anybody can go to these universities and see for themselves who graduated when and so forth. It, now, I don't play the academic card or make a lot out of credentials. I just don't go around calling myself by titles, and I don't want to. I don't even call myself reverend. The only reason I'm ordained is because it allows me to perform rites of passage legally. Some people want me to sign a wedding certificate or a burial certificate or to be able to visit patients in a hospital who are sick when it's not visiting hours. Okay, so I have a credential. Uh by way of practicality. But I don't go around calling myself reverend. Now, legally, I am one, but my name is Jacob or James, James Jacob. Please don't call me reverend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I am one, but don't call me that. Uh, I don't need titles or credentials being flaunted. I'm straight. I'm straight about it. And I have no reason to focus on those things or to talk about them all the time. I just get on with the ministry. Um, it's that simple. I don't think I have anything to prove. I don't have anything to prove uh, other than the Messiahship of the Lord Jesus. That I need to prove from the scripture. I need to prove the Messiahship of the Lord Jesus. That is the reason I studied Talmudic Judaism. If I was an evangelist to the Mormons, I would know the Book of Mormon better than I do. If I was an evangelist to the Muslims, I would know the Quran and the Hadith better than I do, the way my friend Jay Smith does. If I was an evangelist to Roman Catholics, I would be an expert in papal encyclicals. I would know these things and the Summa Theologi and so forth. It so happens my primary calling was an evangelist to Jewish people, so I studied rabbinics and Talmudic literature. I studied the Midrashim, I studied the Tosefta, I studied the Talmud, I even studied the Zohar, which is essentially occultic, it's Kabbalistic literature. But you must know what the people believe if you're trying to reach them. You have to understand their presuppositions. Like Paul in Athens, he knew what the Epicurean and uh, Stoic philosophers believed at Mars Hill with the Areopagus debates. He knew what the Areopagites believed, he knew their presuppositions. So, study to show yourself approved. 
know what the people who you're witnessing to believe. It's important and it's necessary. Now, if that's why somebody is studying Judaism or Islam or Mormonism or anything, we have a Moriel missionary, an excellent one, who has a work among students in Thailand, and he's quite expert in Theravada Buddhism. He has an academic knowledge of Buddhism, and he, of course, speaks the language. Uh, he's speaks Thai. Um, there is a value in this, an evangelistic value and, and a value in apologetics. I also understand 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Jewish believers and their families should keep their identities, they should not assimilate, although they are one spiritually with non-Jews, we're one in Christ. 1 Corinthians 7 says Jews who believe should retain their Jewish identity, and non-Jews should retain their Gentile identity. Now, of course, there is a modified difference. If you're a non-Jew who lives in Israel, or if you're a non-Jew married to a Jew, that could be different within the family. You may be observant. I have no problem with Jewish believers being observant of keeping Hanukkah in a Christocentric way. Jesus is the light of the world. It's the Jewish feast of lights and miracles or Pesach, Passover, Jesus being the Paschal Lamb, the saved Pesach. These things can be used evangelistically to reach out to unsaved Jews. It's cultural identification with the people you're trying to reach, as long as you do it in a Christocentric way to portray Jesus as the messianic fulfillment. Keep your culture, mezuzah on the door. If you wish to eat kosher, it's a personal choice. I have no problem. But for people to imitate Orthodox Jews, especially non-Jews, to imitate Orthodox Jews, and to put people, particularly non-Jews, under the law, and to imitate rabbinic traditions that are not even in the Torah, these things are absurd. But the people doing such things are my critics because I say it's absurd. Uh, the people I know, including people in our own ministry, who were saved from Orthodox Jewish backgrounds, and we've had some incredible people with us who are from that background. We have a Moriel evangelist in Israel who was Hasidic Jew. She was Hasidic Jew. Her family had a funeral for her. Um, we've had other people, and we have a number of Jews in our ministry. The ones who came from Orthodox families will tell you Talmudic Judaism is a false Judaism that rejects its Messiah. It was something they were saved out of. They have no desire to imitate it, and when they see non-Jews imitating it, they think it's ridiculous. This is the reality. My name is James Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you for your question.